This defeating Adventism number 14 is going to be based on a Advent Review magazine I received in the mail today. Here uh, you see in front of you is the October 2020 issue. To the right here are three articles uh, about the three angels messages that I'm going to look at here briefly in this video. So they got the first one here, which, you know, it's three angels messages. The, the the basics it, they didn't even cover the basics it, it's really a, a weak and anemic article even by seven day advanced standards because they don't describe the basics um but here's what they do on on the first one the book of revelation does have a heart underlying uh gospel is its core well see there's the relationship three angels messages is the gospel all right they got the second article, as you saw from the table of contents uh, earlier, and this third article. We are going to start here with this second article. I'm going to look at just a few quotes. And I love how they did this. It's the Gospel of Revelation 14. Isn't that interesting? So, very first page of this article here says what? A careful study of the passage shows that these angels are clearly bearing the everlasting gospel. Here it is again. The Adventist gospel message is the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14, 6. Then it goes to what it says, what every word they bear is crucial and pregnant with deep meaning. That's a very great way to say it. Every word these angels bear is crucial and pregnant with meaning. Wonderful. It's the last message of hope, calling people to prepare for Christ's return. Interesting. I like this. It says, John underscores the message God commissions at the end of time is not, it's not new. It's never changed. It, though now it has a new emphasis. So it's like, what? Didn't we just underline previously it's never changed, but now we have a new emphasis? Uh, I'm sorry, my Adventist friend. That's what we call a change. Anyway, this whole part here about it has never changed. Uh, don't uh, don't forget about that. Remember that. Then it, it goes on in the article to say, well, okay, well, what is the content of this gospel? The first message has three imperatives. And those three imperatives are this. Fear God, give glory, worship the Creator. And that's pretty standard in, in Adventism. Uh, and now how they're defined is different. Now, I've read in the 27 and 28 belief books, discipleship handbook. You know, I have different definitions for that. But anyway, we're going to take this at face value. The second message is what? It's a warning against anti-gospel, anti-Christ, exposed Babylon, exposed false religious system. That's the second angel's message. Third angel's message is what? It's an appeal to the wholeheartedly follow the Lord. No compromise. No falsehood is possible. Very quick in a nutshell, that's the message of the three angels. Didn't we just read each of the messages of these angels is crucial and pregnant with meaning? I want you to find these messages for me in the, in the Word of God, somebody. Please find me the message about exposing at the anti-gospel of Babylon, the false church. And you're not going to find it. But anyway, more to say on that in a second. Let's go to... This last, the third article in the magazine. It starts off on, on, on it actually doesn't start off, but on, on, the, on page 28, it says this about, it's actually a formation of the three angels gospel, how it forms and changes over time. Did you catch what I just said? Changes over time. Didn't we just see where I said, remember this, where it says the gospel has not changed? Well, we're going to look here in the Adventist Review and Magazine to see where it has changed. In the 1850s, it says what? The triple message began to take definitive shape? If the gospel is not a new message and has been in existence since, I'll just say, when the Word of God was codified, how can in 1850 it is beginning to take shape? If you really believe in the Bible, you would say the gospel message is already there and done. It doesn't begin to take shape in 1850s. Sorry, Adventists, boy, we're just ready to, we're digging the hole here on the false gospel of the three angels' messages. Then it goes on to say on the next page, talking about J.N. Andrews here, and how he defined the gospel in, 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 in this book here, the three angels' revelation. He says the first angel is a warning lasting from 1840 to 1844 so it's done 
1840-1844. The second angel's message is preach along uh, Babylon, the worldly church collapses, Babylon's fall of moral, etc. The third message depicts a conflict between those who keep God's commandments and those who defend the beast. All right, well, that's Andrews. What does Uriah Smith say in this article? Same page, just actually just down the column a little bit. So he says what the first angel's message is pretty much the same as Andrews. But he says Babylon meant confusion, composed of three parts, pagan, papal, and apostate, Protestant. Well, I don't quite see all that in Andrews. Okay, the third angel's message, final special message, dying world, embracing the first two angels, that is. And it adds a unique uh, co content unique to itself. It doesn't explain it to us here. I'm assuming that's a mark of the beast. And then at the very end, the conclusion of the entire article uh, of this, the three angels in 19th century, it says what the three angels messages had not changed much from that of Andrews and Smith. Much? Should the gospel message change at all? This is admission, Adventist, that your gospel message is changing. Oh, but keep reading. And we talk here about the, the famous 1888 conference. Uh, there was a new perception of humanity's total inability to save themselves, and they talk about adding the fact of uh, Christ and grace into the gospel message in 1888. I thought the message, remember where I said remember this? Didn't change at all, but it did. Andrews has a different gospel message in Uriah Smith than the 1888, and the whole thing is trying to be formulated in the 1850s. What a disaster. Let's summarize the Advent gospel message. Look on the left here. Advent. Advent gospel. What? Preparing for Christ's return, 1840, 1844. A new emphasis, whatever that right emphasis on their three angels gospel. It's fear God, give him glory, worship him, and etc. What's the biblical gospel? First of all, where did it come from? Galatians 1, 11, and 12. Paul said what? Let me tell you, my friends, that the gospel I preach is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any human being, nor did anyone teach it to me. It was Christ Jesus himself who revealed it to me. Where did Paul get it? He got it by divine revelation from Jesus Christ himself. What does Paul say about that gospel that he got from Jesus Christ? He says this, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preach to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. This is the gospel of salvation. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, he received it above, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Does anything I just read in the biblical gospel, in this Adventist gospel, the Adventist gospel that was developed in the 1850s, also by Andrews and Smith, who are both heretical anti-Trinitarians. No, the Adventist gospel is not the biblical gospel. And for this, my Adventist friends, heed this warning, because the gospel you preach is a gospel which is twice cursed according to the scriptures. Read along with me and we're going to close this out. I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel, or three angels, from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, like three angels, let him be accursed. As I said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching the gospel contrary to the one you receive, let him be a curse. You are cursed twice for preaching this gospel in this October 2020 issue. Adventist, repent of your association with this false religion, which is teaching this cursed gospel message.